Welcome back to Planet Doug. And over the last few days, a lot of luck has been swirling around Planet Doug, and that's kind of an unusual situation. I'll probably talk about the other lucky things in other videos. This video, of course, is all about this lucky package. This package came as a complete surprise. It was not something I was anticipating. It was not something I was even thinking about or on my horizon at all. The mystery benefactor who sent me the amazing item in this box didn't contact me beforehand or anything like that. They simply felt this was something I needed in my life, could use in my life, and they sent it to me. And then after they sent it, the mystery benefactor contacted me and said, hey, something's uh, coming in the mail. And I know what is inside the box. And I could tell you, but I won't. I will leave it, a leave, leave it as a surprise for you as I open it up. But I'm very excited about this. More than excited, I'm intrigued. This package is fighting me. It doesn't, it doesn't, want, to, uh, it doesn't want to open. There we go. And there's the, the tongue that was uh, holding it in place. <laughs> Maybe you'll see it right away. Maybe there's just a bubble wrap. We'll find out. Uh, bubble wrap and wrapping. Oh yeah, lots of bubble wrap. Look at that. <laughs> Any guesses? I'd be very, well, I don't know. Would I be surprised if anyone could guess what this is? I don't know if this will surprise anyone or not. Okay, empty box. I feel like a magician. There's nothing in the box. That's all there is in the box. And now I'll uh, pull something amazing out of the box. Set that aside. All right. Cutting through the tape. <laughs> I'm very meticulous when it comes to opening things. And there it is. <laughs> what a thing to emerge in a Planet Doug. Check that out. If you don't know what this is, I'll read it for you. That is the DG, DJI Pocket 2 camera. Not only that, this is the creator combo. So you can buy the DJI Pocket 2 camera. This is the second version. The DJI Pocket came out one or two years ago. And um, the feedback from the YouTuber community was that they liked it, but they had some issues with it. One of the main issues that kept me away from the DJI Pocket completely was that the field of view wasn't very wide. It was still kind of a narrow field of view. So if as a vlogger, you know, you're holding your DJI pocket here, filming yourself, it was really tight on your face. Unlike a GoPro, of course, which has a very wide field of view. But the whole point of this, again, assuming you're not familiar with uh, DJI pockets at all, is that it is a very small, lightweight unit, and it is, built into its own gimbal. So it's a little handle with a tiny gimbal on top. So, I mean, a GoPro, for example, is known for its incredible stabilization, but it's digital stabilization. What they do in a GoPro is they, they do it with software, with very, you know, almost sorcery style software, where the, the actual camera and the sensor Everything is like bouncing around like crazy because it's an action camera. You know, you're zooming along on your surfboard or your skis or your snowboard or your skateboard, bouncing like crazy. And the video itself is actually bouncing like crazy inside the GoPro. But then they use software to stabilize it and give you a rock solid image. Cameras like the DJI Pocket 
they have a physical approach, not a software approach. So the camera lens itself is built into its own gimbal and the gimbal itself adjusts for the motion of your body. So as the camera is bouncing up and down and vibrating in your hand, the gimbal is holding the camera and the lens itself steady. Um, what else to say about it? Oh, a big advantage with the DJI over a GoPro, which in my mind is kind of one of the main competitors. Say if I'm going out for a walk today and I want to film, now that I have this, it's sort of like, hmm, what do I bring? Do I bring this or do I bring the GoPro? You know, pros and cons, which is better? Which should I use? And one of the big advantages to this unit uh, in addition to the gimbal stabilization is it has a bigger sensor. You know, action cameras by definition tend to have very small sensors. I believe the sensor in the GoPro is what they call a one over 2.3 inch sensor, which is the same size basically as most sensors you'll find in smartphones. Very, very tiny, little, little square. And this one, I believe, the new Pocket 2 has a 1 over 1.7 inch sensor. Those numbers are very confusing, but basically, I believe the sensor in the DJI Pocket 2 is twice, is roughly twice as big, is double the size of the sensor in a GoPro. And that kind of makes it more like a real camera sensor. It's still nowhere near as big as what you get in a APS-C camera or um, a Micro Four Thirds sensor or full frame. It's still small compared to that, but it's double the size of the one you get in a GoPro. And that allows you to get a much better image quality and you get that classic background blur more easily where it um, gives you bokeh in the background. So if I'm filming myself, it could be that I'm nicely sharp and in focus, and then the background behind me has a nice, soft kind of blur. It looks very cinematic, very appealing kind of image. And the new DJI Pocket, the Pocket 2, has a much wider field of view. They changed the lens. So I believe it's the equivalent of a 20 millimeter lens, which is amazing. That, that's like the perfect width for me. The camera that I'm using to film this is the uh, Panasonic G85, and I'm using my Olympus 24 millimeter lens on it. In Micro Four Thirds terms, it's a 12 millimeter, but to compare it to this, it's, a, it's the equivalent of 24 millimeters. And as you can see, yeah, it's pretty wide. 24 millimeters is the standard for a wide angle lens. Like almost every kit lens you get in the world for any camera at, at its widest end, it's going to be 24 millimeters and then go up from there. And 24 millimeters is considered wide, but it's not wide enough for me. I find 24, if you're holding the camera right here, is still too tight for me. So this one went further widened it out to 20 millimeters, and I'm hoping that will be the perfect width. Um, not as wide as a GoPro, but quite a bit wider even than this uh, 24 millimeter. And this particular model that my mystery benefactor sent me contains the Creator Combo, which includes all of the accessories that you can get for the pocket. The normal pocket is the camera, basically. And the creator combo includes a whole bunch of other stuff. In particular for me, it contains another like a kind of a magic grip. It's a special grip that you attach to the bottom of the DJI. And then that grip contains a microphone jack, which I think is also a headphone jack. So you can hear your own audio, which is amazing. And it contains a wireless microphone. So inside the Creator Combo is its own wireless microphone designed specifically for the DJI. So I, I always use this microphone, the, uh, the Rode Wireless Go, 
which I have here, and then I have it mounted on the camera. The DJI Pocket 2 Creator Combo has its own unit, very, very similar to this, that's built into the handle itself. So that's pretty amazing too. And it has a, a, an additional wide angle lens adapter, which then gives you a much wider field of view. And it has its own little tripod uh, mount. And the DJI has an actual um, standard tripod screw mount in the bottom of it, something which GoPro continues to ignore. So that's very handy, makes it very um, adaptable to any other gear you might have. It has a tripod mount built into it. And the camera itself has all kinds of interesting features like a follow tracking mode. So if I set this camera up on a table and I lock it onto my face, I can just walk anywhere I want. I can walk out of, out of the screen completely and the camera, because it's built onto its own gimbal, will turn and follow me wherever I go. I believe in 360 degrees maybe. I'll have to learn all this. But so, you know, if you were inside a room, you're in a coffee shop or in a restaurant, wherever you are, you just put this down, you know, lock it to your face, and then you can just go anywhere you want. Sit down at the table, get up, go to the counter, and the camera will magically just follow you wherever you go. That's what I've seen in the videos. Whether it will really work for me, we'll find that out. Anyway, um, enough uh, babbling. Those are just sort of the basics. Let's... Uh, open this up. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. All right. I don't want to uh, apply too much pressure. It's in perfect condition. I mean, this box looks like it came directly from the store. So I don't want to uh, open it in any kind of ham fisted fashion and, and rip apart this uh, poor box. <laughs> this is so silly and it's so typical of uh, Planet Doug. It's one of the reasons I like the new name of this channel that I chose Planet Doug because things happen in my world that don't happen anywhere else. I mean, it's a weird place to live, Planet Doug, let me tell you. Anyway, I've been fighting with this box for the longest time, trying to open the top. I cannot get that open. I tried, I switched to the bottom. I could not get that open. I'm like, how, this, this thing is like Fort Knox. I cannot get into it. <laughs> it's driving me nuts. So what I ended up doing, which is so insane, I went onto the internet, onto Google, and I'm typing in, how do you open the DJI Pocket 2 box? Who else has to Google things like that? A brand new camera. How do I open the box? I can't even figure that out. What hope do I have of actually using the camera? And, well, I, and the Google search actually gave me the answer. The bottom and the top don't open. The whole thing, the, 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 the top, this part opens up. And to do that, you have to get all the way down to this edge, peel off this little sticker. My mystery benefactor is such a consummate packer um, and he, he takes such good care of his equipment. He didn't even cut through the sticker. He obviously peeled it off at some point and then um, put it back into place or he never opened the box. I mean, that's a possibility, um, but I have to... Uh, remove this sticker. I thought it would peel right off because I thought he would have removed it. Yeah, he must have. Now that I've removed the sticker, <laughs> watch how easy this is. Ta -da! Dummy, absolute dummy. So that's how it opens up. Anyone out there, forget about the top or the bottom. That's how you open it. Wow. Modern electronics are really incredible. Just the, the, I guess that's why unboxing videos are a thing on YouTube because just opening up a package can be an experience all by itself. 
I'm hoping not to go into this thing in any more detail than I already have because there's so much to learn and to know about this product. But you've got a little box here, which I assume contains all kinds of um, fun and interesting accessories. This would be the camera itself and the handle, which comes inside its own uh, carrying case. I guess the whole, I mean, it's called a pocket. So the whole idea is that you're able to take this high quality unit with a gimbal, its own gimbal, and have something this small that, if you have big pockets, fits right into your pocket. But look at that. That is so small. Okay, where was I? The battery died in my Panasonic. I had to replace it. And that's another feature of Planet Doug, which I don't think anyone else has to deal with. All the batteries that I have for my Panasonic camera have swollen up because of the, the heat and humidity in Southeast Asia, I guess. And they don't fit inside the compartment very easily anymore. I have to get new batteries, basically. But um, I don't have any choice right now but to use the ones I have. And I'm worried that they're so swollen, I have to really shove them into the camera to get them to fit. And then they're impossible to get out again because they're jammed in there. So in order to insert a battery, I have to actually um, cut several pieces of strong thread and wrap it around the battery and then slowly shove the battery inside close the compartment and then when I go to remove the battery I can grab all that thread pull it together into one strong rope and then <clears throat> pull the battery out it's the only way I can get the battery out and it's a real risk because I could end up with a battery like stuck inside my expensive camera forever um, but yeah these are the things I do today I really should order new batteries whoa so we've got a um, set of instruction manuals, I assume, are in there. And I think I'm going to need a lot of instruction for all of this. And look at that. Down at the bottom, there is a piece of foam. And embedded in the foam are all of the uh, accessories, or some of the accessories that come with the camera. I haven't, I've never seen one of these myself. Um, my uh, friend in Kuala Lumpur. I talked about him before. Um, he runs the Wander Eats uh, YouTube channel. He bought one of these himself. I believe he got the pocket too. I think he did. And um, so I, I know a little bit about it from chatting with him and watching his videos about his experience and other reviews. And from what I understand, a lot of the um, smaller accessories, which I believe are in this box that you would use, actually fit inside the handle. There's little spots inside the handle where even if you're not using that little accessory, you can click it into place and you have everything you need with you at all times. But let's take, let's see if I can pull this foam out. No, I don't think the foam is going to come out. So where do we start? Um, start here, see what kind of manuals we get. I'm a big fan of manuals. I mentioned that before. Ooh. DJI uh, stickers, that's cool. Yeah, quick start guide. So that will be my reading over coffee in a moment. And then disclaimer and uh, safety warn guidelines and a warranty there. So we'll set that uh, aside. Well, I'm very intrigued by what could be in this box. Very elegant, slim sort of affair. Everything neatly wrapped still. Ooh, okay. <laughs> I'm easily entertained, apparently. I'm like, ooh, wee, about every little thing. Ah, okay. Microphone uh, windscreen. Dead cat as a. Some people call it. That's a very tiny one, so you call that perhaps a dead, uh, dead kitty. Very, very grim name. Ah, okay, 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 okay. This is an interesting little device. Oh, 
Oh, what is that actually? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. This is a small attachment, has a USB-C on it, and what you would do with this is you attach it to your camera, and then it has, it has a USB-C port now sticking out of the side of the camera, and if you want to, you could take your smartphone, plug it right into that, and then that would turn your phone into a screen and controller for the uh, camera itself. Personally, I don't anticipate using that a lot. I'm not a big fan of using smartphones for shooting video or even taking pictures. It's just, a, it's not designed for that. The form factor, everything about it, to me, always seems awkward. So I'm much more of a camera guy and sort of jamming your phone onto your pocket too on this little USB. You got, kind of got to hold on to the phone and then you got to hold on to this and it's a loose connection. And I'm not sure how in the world you could hold on to them both and touch the screen of your phone to manipulate controls. Just feels like that would be very awkward to me. But that is uh, an option if that works uh, in some situations. What else is in there? Oh, this is the, uh, the wide angle adapter, which I believe is magnetic. So the lens on the camera itself, as I said, I believe is about 20 millimeters. And then if you want to go wider than that, you take this small adapter and I believe it has a magnet attachment system and it just clicks onto your camera and it gives you a, it's basically a wide angle lens. But I'm telling you, that is the tiniest wide angle lens I have ever seen in my life. I'm very interested to see. Um, I'm a big fan of wide angle. I mean, when it comes to vlogging in particular, if someone is traveling around the world and filming themselves, I don't want their whole head filming the frame. I don't mind if they're tiny because I want to see what's around them. So for my money, sometimes the wider the better. On the GoPro, of course, you can go into super view, which is extremely wide, but then you get a lot of distortion and that can be off-putting. We'll have to see whether this wide angle lens is some, somewhere in the middle maybe. Maybe wide enough that you can use it, but not so wide that it causes a lot of distortion. This, this box kind of illustrates um, one of the feelings I had about this product when I was looking at reviews and, and trying to decide whether it's a camera that I would like or not. One sort of negative feeling I had about it was there's so many little parts. My life is already dominated by so many gadgets and each gadget breaks down into a hundred other gadgets and adapters and cables and on and on and on. If I turn the camera in that direction, you would see what my bed looks like and you can't even see it right now. It is just a sea of electronic gadgetry. I mean, it's just, it's really kind of ridiculous. And then this camera itself, it's, amazing that it is modular and has all these things you can do with it but at the same time i mean you've got this little guy and then you've got this little guy and then you've got this little guy and now this one which is the um, joystick so i think this would be the main controller for the camera if you're not going to attach your smartphone with this usb-c gizmo you would probably have this attached to your DJI pocket all the time. It slides in and clicks into place and it gives you a button and then a very small joystick. And that joystick is the main mechanism for controlling the, uh, the camera and, and settings and things like that. So you've got this little, little device, little gizmo. Add it to the, uh, add it to the pile. Another one has come out. I, I, I know what all the, I was expecting all of those. This one? I don't even know what this one is. What? Oh, oh, okay, okay. So this is the same as the USB-C model, but that would be for your Android phone maybe. And maybe this one is for iPhones because it has a different connector on it. It looks to be the same 
design as this one, but instead of USB-C, it has, I guess that's maybe an iPhone connector. I don't really know, but I think that's what that is. I don't think the box is even empty. No, there's more stuff coming out. Okay, wrist, uh, wrist strap, which um, I'm kind of a fan of wrist straps if they're designed well, because as I walk around, I talked about this in a previous video, I always have my camera in my hand all the time. It's just there dangling in my hand. And it's kind of nice to have this wrist strap you know, attached to the camera, then you're holding on to the camera. And if you get bumped in a crowd and you end up dropping the camera, you know, it doesn't crash to the ground. And of course, it gives you that little bit of confidence that if someone uh, sneaks up behind you and grabs the camera out of your hand and tries to run away, they're going to be held back a little bit by this wrist strap. You know, maybe they won't be able to actually pull the camera out of your grip because this will uh, hold it in place. So I do like a good uh, wrist strap. More. Cable. <laughs> We've come to the end. We've come to the end. So, whoa, that's an interesting cable. What's going on here? USB-A on one side, and then it has a splitter. Two USB-C ports on the other side. Why? Why two? I guess I don't know as much about this camera as I thought I did. I don't know why. I guess I'll find out. Um, maybe this connects with the creator combo that one connects to the camera and one connects to the extra grip in the creator combo. And you have to charge two different batteries. Are there two batteries in, in the unit? Could be. <laughs> it's Christmas, I'm telling you. It is uh, Christmas today. Okay, here's more of the Creator Combo, starting at the top. Ah, okay. So there's the, the brains of the Creator Combo. This is the extra grip that you attach to the bottom of the DJI. And it has its own USB-C port, of course. It has a uh, microphone jack and I believe headphone jack. And of course, on the top, it has a USB-C, which connects to the camera. And it's got some little bit of weight to it. So inside here, I believe, is the receiver for the wireless mic. Okay, very, very nice. That has a very solid feeling to it. And it has the, uh, which I love so much, the quarter inch 20 standard uh, tripod thread mount in the bottom. And that is amazing. I love that. And, oh, microphone. Wow, 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 wow. Oh, okay, that might explain the dual charging cable. This is the microphone, basically the DJI version of this Rode Wireless Go. So this is the microphone that I would clip to my shirt and be able to connect wirelessly to this. That is amazing. I've, I've seen reviews of this and the feedback is that in terms of sound quality or maybe even the strength of the connection, it's not quite on the same level as the, as the Rode Wireless Go. I think this is still the gold standard for a wireless mic. This is the original Rode Wireless Go. They've come up with a new generation which is even far more advanced than this one, but I believe this is considered the gold standard, and this isn't quite up to that level, but from what I've heard, it's perfectly fine. And if I had to choose between using this and using a, um, you know, a lavalier mic with a cable attaching me to the camera, I'll go with this, you know, every single time, because I'm a big fan of wireless mics in uh, general. So, but it also has its own battery. So maybe that's why it has a dual charger. So when you're charging, you can charge your microphone with one and then you can charge your camera with the other. So you can charge two at the same time. Somebody at DJI was thinking. 
let's uh, unplug those for now and uh, keep everything nicely lined up here in front of me. Uh, something else at the bottom. Ah, okay. So this is another tripod mount. So if you're not using your creator combo extension and you still want to mount just the camera onto a tripod, you click this on the bottom and then you get a um, tripod mount. And based on what I've seen online and my mystery benefactor already told me this is you got to really think about this before you use it because once you click it into place, it's not coming off. It's really hard to get off. And I saw people struggling with this thing. There's no way I can tell it's very smooth. You can't get a grip on it. And people were worried. They were trying to pull it off their camera and they had to apply so much force to do it. They were worried about breaking the camera. But my mystery benefactor gave me a tip that in order to do it, you basically have to screw something into the tripod mount, like screw a tripod into that and then use the tripod to pull it loose. So very clever. So well, what are we up to? We're up to um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight little uh, doodads there. One more left. And this is very cool. This is a uh, mini tripod, so it has a quarter inch 20 thread and then three legs at the bottom. So this being your um, adapter, you know, tripod adapter, yeah, just uh, screws onto there. And now you've got yourself a little tripod for your camera. Okay, it has some tension in the bottom. There's no locking mechanism that I can see but you basically just adjust it to get the right angle and then it holds it in place because this is a very lightweight unit. You don't need a whole lot of um, power in the, uh, in the mount here to hold it in place. I like that. Yeah, that is very, very nice. I could see using this with my other cameras because I often want, even want to put my Panasonic down at you know, right at tabletop level. And this would be very handy, uh, perhaps, for that. Might be too, too small, nah, forget about that. I have, I have other tripods for that. Okay, so empty, I believe. Empty, very nice packaging. Once you figure out the secret. And now, at long last, let's put this away. <laughs> I've kept you waiting so long just to see the camera, but to be honest, I'm doing it for myself. I'm very much a man of delayed gratification. Um, I can, I can wait days for opening something just to prolong the pleasure, you know, the anticipation of, uh, of opening it. Uh, wow. Look at that. Can you imagine 10 years ago taking something like this back in time and handing it to a person and saying like, what do you think this is? They would have no clue. I mean, this is so futuristic. Wow. So there's the, um, the, the case. I've heard some criticism of this case, the original pocket that came out, I guess, had a really nice case where the, the camera came out of it really easily and yet was still held in place. So it was a very convenient. But I've seen people online talk about this one that it was really kind of hard to get the camera out. And yeah, I kind of had to, basically, the, I was watching some tutorials about this um, since I knew uh, it was coming. And uh, one guy said, basically what you have to do is just get your finger here in the end, pry it loose from the bottom. And then once you get the bottom out, then the rest of the camera comes free. And there in the case there are all these cutouts that I mentioned. So there's one in there for the, um, the wide angle adapter, just clicks right into there. 
and then there are two other spots there. Oh, okay, that would be for your various um, controllers that you attach. That is really nice. I love that because a lot of these gadgets that you get, as soon as you take them out of the box, it's like a countdown starts, like how many hours or how many days until you lose it, realistically. Who can keep track of all these little things? And then you've got to find another bag to put them all in, and then you've got this uh, bag and a bag and a bag. So having DGI think about that in advance and think, hey, why don't we provide little slots inside the handle itself? Assuming these items stay in place as this is bouncing around in your knapsack, we'll find out. It's got a piece of foam here at the top, which perhaps is only for shipping. Wow. Does it? So it fits in nicely. The thing is about that foam, yeah, you're going to lose that, obviously. You know, you can't really put it in and out every time. I think if the foam was meant to be there, it would have been glued in place permanently or something. So I don't think it's meant to be there normally. So let's pull this out. Okay. And I can see how there's a, there's a cutout here where you're supposed to grip it with your fingers and pull it out but I can tell that's, that's, yeah, maybe you can develop a technique after a while and figure that out. But there it is. Wow. It feels so solid. I'm amazed actually. I didn't expect that at all. It feels very solid and well-made because that's another, when I was thinking about this camera and whether it fits into my life, one of my concerns about it is basically the gimbal because it's a delicate mechanism. It, it only works because it has all these very precise electric motors in there that balance the lens perfectly. And, and you can't go knocking this about. This is not a GoPro. Um, a GoPro you, I could drop on the floor and it's going to be fine. It, I could be riding the scooter probably at 60 kilometers an hour. It could fall off and bounce down the highway. Probably be damaged, but I bet it would keep working. Not so much this. I mean, I think you have to be aware of that delicate gimbal mechanism at the top and make sure you're not slamming it into anything. And if you're carrying it around, you can't just toss this into your pocket or into your knapsack like you would a GoPro. You've got to, you know, turn it off, wait for the uh, gimbal to sort of shut down and, and then situate itself properly. And I guess it has to be sitting like that before you put it back into the case or something like that. So it is a, a bit of a delicate mechanism up there at the top, but the rest of it is, is very solid. It makes me wonder why it's so solid. What is all inside there? Is it mainly battery? There is a USB-C port in the bottom, so I guess you could charge it. That was another concern I had about this camera as compared to a regular GoPro. And that is that the battery is built into it. With a GoPro, the battery is separate. So I could go out into the world and bring five or six or 10, as many charged batteries as I want, and just bring all the batteries with me. And every time the battery runs out, I just put in a new battery and I keep going. With the DJI Pocket, when the battery dies, you're done. You have to charge in the unit itself in order to recharge the battery. I'm not quite sure what the battery life is for, uh, for this unit. It's one of the many things I'll, I'll be finding out over the next little while, I guess. Well, this being my first close-up look at this unit, let's see if there's anything else that jumps out at me. I believe that is the uh, power button on the side, flush with the unit. There are some little punch holes. I believe it has three or four microphones built into it, one on this side, one on the back, one on that side, and maybe one on the front. Yeah, so it has microphones, I believe, on at least three sides, maybe four sides, 
if you don't use an external microphone or the uh, or the wireless microphone and the front right now it has a screen of course I haven't mentioned that yet but it has a very small almost postage stamp size screen on the front and that will take some getting used to because I've gotten so accustomed to the big the relatively big screen on the GoPro Hero 9 and the Hero 7 uh, the Hero 9 having the screen on the front and the back this has just the one screen and with this, is that the front or the back? I guess it's, it's hard to say. I guess that is the back of it facing me. Okay. And it has a very small screen. I haven't powered it up yet, so I haven't seen the screen. And yeah, there's the slot where you, oh, look at that. Okay. I didn't even realize that it has, a... I was wondering how it, it connects. If you slide in one of these controllers, how does it connect? Because it's blank, but there's a little door here. And you slide that off. Something else, of course, which you are promptly going to lose, perhaps. And now it exposes all of the connectors. So let's uh, put something in there right now. Ah. <laughs> I'm so nervous. I'm going to put in place the, uh, the regular controller with the joystick. And I guess it just slides in there. Yeah, okay. Satisfying little click. And I don't anticipate removing that very often, if ever, because I don't think I'll be connecting a smartphone. I think that will remain in place. And I think you just leave it there forever. Oh yeah, I guess that you have this cutout in the handle and one reason for that would be to allow room for one of these controllers to stick out to the side. Otherwise it wouldn't fit inside the case. So well, that's fine. And there you have it. So I guess you're, you're holding it like this. And I watched a long tutorial yesterday where the guy was praising it immensely. And I believe he was a professional photographer because his demo reel of the video he shot with this thing just kind of blew my mind. It was so good, really high quality imagery. I don't know whether I will get that kind of imagery out of it, but it's capable of that, I guess. But he didn't get the creator combo. He said he really liked it, that it was so small. And he thought the extra grip would take a pleasingly small device and suddenly make it unwieldy and too big. But I'm kind of the opposite. I don't care if it gets bigger as long as the functionality gets improved. So I'm very happy to add the extra grip on the bottom. But in order to do that, the existing base has to be removed. Ah, I just pressed a button by accident. I don't know how you get that off. Again, I don't uh, want to do anything that I'm going to regret. But yeah, I don't see that coming off very easily. I'll have to do some research and <laughs> find out what is the proper technique for removing the base. Maybe there's a locking mechanism that I can't see. And here on the edge, it has a, uh, S a micro SD card slot. So this records onto a micro SD card and uh, there's no interior compartment that you have to open because the unit obviously is not waterproof. There's no way you could waterproof this. So you just slide your card into there and it clicks into place. Hopefully it's recessed and then, um, yeah. Well, um, I'm going to figure out how to take this off because I want to add the um, creator combo base while I'm doing this unboxing and overview. So I'll shut off the camera and figure that out. But just for now, let's turn it on and watch what happens to the gimbal at the top. I'll just press the power button and see what happens. And you should be able to see the screen turn on. Whoa. <laughs> Tap start to learn how to use the control stick. All right, I'll do that. Oh, okay, it's a touch screen. Good to know. 
press A button to switch gimbal follow modes. So yeah, it's not like a regular camera. It's going to take me some brain power to figure this out. A GoPro, I want to film that. I just point it there. I want to film down. I just point it. I just point the camera at what I want to control. But a gimbal has a mind of its own and it's not necessarily pointing at what you pointed at. It, it, it tracks things and it tilts up and down. And so I don't really know how to use it, but it has three different modes for how you control what the camera is aimed at. And I guess the A button switches between the different modes. Tilt locked, FPV and follow mode. Okay, three modes. I better learn what those are. And now do I touch the screen to continue? Oh, look at that. Okay, it is tilting. So I guess I can control what it points at. If I want to film what's on the table in front of me, I can point it down. Okay, it's still pointing down. Okay, but I guess the point is that if you move quickly, it does not move quickly. It is, con it is introducing a smooth pan. So if I quickly go like this, the gimbal will compensate for that as much as it can and then introduce a smooth panning up and down. But I can, using this mode, whatever mode I'm in, to actually just point it where I want it to go. And turn it around and point it back at me. Wow, okay, that's a good field of view. That is nice. This is like arm's length, 20 millimeters. That's very wide. That is nice. I like that a lot. Doug approved. Planet Doug approved. Okay, I'm digging that. Now, I don't know how to switch from mode to mode. So all that's as, that's as much as I'm going to do right now. I will uh, dive into all the controls and figure out how to do this. Wow. It's like how I, I was watching the trailer for the new Tom Hanks movie just this morning, actually. It's called Finch. It's one of, it's, I'm a sucker for anything post-apocalyptic and Tom Hanks' character is in some kind of a post-apocalyptic world where life on the planet has been wiped out and everyone's living in a desolate landscape now. And he's trying to survive. And one way he survives is by building his own robot. And the robot becomes his companion and helper, along with a dog. All that's in the trailer, probably all over the poster, so I'm not giving anything away. But I have a sense like I have my own robot now because it has, it does what I tell it to do, but it also introduces its own take on what I'm telling it to do. It has its own brain. Look at that. Just watching that smooth motion. And I believe one of these buttons, if I press it three times, it swivels the head around because I was wondering about that. Like I'm aiming it at me and I want to see the screen, but now I want to film what's ahead of me. Do I have to turn the whole thing around? And now I can't see the screen anymore, but I believe three quick presses, not that button, the one below it. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. Did you see that? Three quick presses. One, two, three. And the gimbal just swivels around. Now it's aiming at me. I'm in a beautiful, amazing market or something. I want to film what's ahead of me. Three quick presses. <laughs> and it zooms around back to me. Oop. Oh, I just took it. I just switched into photo mode. Oh, okay. Single presses cycles through the modes, photo mode, video mode. Three presses should swivel. 
and around it goes. That is super cool. Hmm. Many, many, many things to learn about this camera. But I'm very impressed with what I'm seeing right now. And it feels so good in my hand. Huh. I like this a lot. So we've got this little um, tripod base and it has its own. Oh no, it doesn't. Ah, okay. So if I wanted to attach it to a tripod, I have to remove this and replace it with this. So that's where we're stuck right now. I don't know how to remove that. I'm going to figure that out and then I'll come back. Success of a sort. I had to go back to the internet, go into Google Chrome and type in silly things like, how do you remove the bottom of the DJI Pocket 2? <laughs> you get thousands of results because everyone on the planet is struggling with this, you know, how to get this off. And the, for the base that's on the unit itself, there doesn't seem to be any particular trick. Um, I couldn't get it off. My fingers are just not strong enough to get a grip. Plus, I'm a little bit nervous. I don't want to use my full you know, Hulk strength because I don't want to break anything. I want to know how you do it. And for the actual base, it turns out the easiest thing is really just to get your fingernail or thumbnail into the edge and kind of loosen it on one side and another and kind of work it off. Because this is actually much smaller than I expected. It's a tiny little cap and there's really nothing to get a grip on. So now that that's off, and again, luckily for me, I don't think I'll ever need to do this again because I think I will always have this. And while I was doing my research, I got a little bit more familiar with the vocabulary. DJI calls this the do it all handle. I don't know what I've been calling it to this point, like the magic handle or the creator combo grip or whatever I've called it, but this is the do it all handle. And once I click it into place, I'm not sure that I'll ever have a reason to remove it. But uh, so that line up the USB C. Ah. In there. It definitely increases the size a lot. I would say by 50%. Yeah. And compared to the original DJI Pocket, you add the uh, do-it-all handle and it adds an additional 50% um, to the length, like half of this again. But I, I like that. There is a tendency in the modern world of gadgetry that in the marketing anyway, things are supposed to be smaller and smaller and smaller. We had that for a long time with smartphones. The whole thing was to make the smallest, thinnest smartphone ever. But then they got so small that you couldn't even uh, manipulate the thing anymore. And I prefer things that are larger that you can actually hold on to. And I'm finding the, the original DJI, the base, is so small that I'm accidentally touching the buttons. Just as I'm just trying to hold on to it and I touch the buttons by accident because there's nowhere else to put my fingers. But now with this on it, considerably longer and now my thumb is far away from the power button. I actually have to reach and get to the power button. So let's, uh, let's turn it on again. Doop. There it is. Yeah, I'm not really sure how I would hold on to this. I'm very much a grip person. I like having a grip attached to my cameras. And I don't generally hold on to the camera itself, no matter what I'm doing. And that might be a bit of a problem with this because it is so tall and narrow. If I put some kind of a grip underneath it, you know, now we've got this like weird long thing. So maybe I will end up just holding it in my hand like that. So I don't like to have my arm in the shot. The, the, my favorite grips for the GoPro are kind of curved. So in fact, I can hold the grip quite low and then the GoPro itself is curved up above aiming at me and then my arm. It, it actually looks like it's floating in the, hair, in the air ahead of me. You don't have the sensation of me, you know, holding something like this. 
but maybe this will uh, work out because it is so tall. I'm holding it in my hand, but it's actually sitting four or five inches above my hand. All right, have I babbled about this enough? I think I have. To sum up, I have to say I'm really pleased. I really am. I was nervous that the fidgetiness of a gimbal with all these small parts and my perception of a delicate mechanism would interfere with, with being able to use the camera like this, but it seems to get the balance pretty well for me. I mean, the gimbal itself, obviously, you're not banging that around. You want to keep it in the case. You're not going to treat it like a GoPro, but in terms of the overall thing, no, I, I, I think I can learn to use that quite happily. I like that quite a lot. It appeals to me, the whole functionality of it. And I've been playing around with the gimbal a little bit more off camera. <laughs> And what I like about it is I do seem able to just sort of point it at the things I want to record. It's just that the gimbal itself introduces a smoothness that isn't there normally. So if I'm filming here and then I just move it quickly to film over there, the camera itself is a little bit behind my motion. It doesn't just jerk in that direction. It will actually just gradually start to turn and smoothly make that adjustment, even if I'm not doing it smoothly myself. So it looks like it's something I can work with, sort of like Tom Hanks' uh, robot. I don't know the name of his robot. I think his character is called Finch, and he probably gives his robot a name, but I don't know what it is. Anyway, Tom Hanks' robot, this is kind of what I think of this. Maybe I'll call it uh, Finch. You know, Finch here is uh, already, I'm, dig I'm digging Finch. Finch is going to be a good companion in my life, I think. So I think I'll end it there. Absolutely amazing uh, gift from my mystery benefactor. Thank you very much to my mystery benefactor for sending this my way. I think it's going to fit in pretty nicely into my life. I really do. I'm uh, feeling pretty confident about it. Now I get to dive into all of the, the learning curve <clears throat> the steep, steep learning curve to master all of the uh, techniques and uh, all of the controls. That's it. DJI Pocket 2 Creator Combo Kit is now a part of uh, Planet Doug. <laughs>